So in 2006, R.V. Lenoir took this basic idea of the petrophysical classification, which basically a lot of companies were doing internally, and he tried to come up with a universal classification that would maximize the predictability of permeability based on porosity. So let's look at his scheme, and it's a relatively complex scheme. I, I am not expecting you to actually know this by heart, but it's, it's interesting to look at what he's done. So first of all, in this, he distinguishes different pore types. So we have interparticle, we have intercrystal, we have intraparticle, moldic, voggy, and we also have mudstone microporosity. And except for the microporosity, all of the other terms are effectively the chocolate and prey classification. But what's interesting is that he then focuses on pore size. He thinks that pore size matters. So he has micro pores, meso pores, and macro pores. And notice that the cutoffs, the dimensions, vary depending on the pore type. So a micro pore in interparticle porosity, for instance, is 10 to 50 micron, but a micro pore in intercrystalline porosity is 10 to 20 micron, despite both of them being micropore. And the reason these cutoffs are here is because they're empirical. They're here to maximize the ability to predict permeability based on porosity. And another very important distinction from Lonoi compared to Lucia or previous classification is that Lonoi gives a pore distribution indication, whether the pores are uniformly distributed or whether their distribution is more patchy. So then that gives you basically pore fabric. So an example of pore fabric, the first one would be interparticle uniform micropore. So you just use these three terms together. And the really interesting thing is to look at the square R, uh, the last column, which is you know how well you can actually fit a, a predicted line through data points. And you can see that those square R's are pretty high for all of the classification except for the voggy porosity. The voggy porosity is always problematic. It's always a 50%, you know, it's, a, it's essentially a toss of the coin. But let's, let's look at some example to um, cement this understanding of Lonoi. So here we have example of uniformly distributed macro porosity. And these are two examples, top and bottom. And I'll show you also an example of mesopores, but these are patchy. So you can see that compared to the previous slide, here the porosity is not evenly distributed at the core size or the thin section size. But really, the value of this classification comes when you look at the petrophysical characteristics of these different classes. So here I'm showing you, for instance, the interparticle mesoporosity of all the samples. There's about 2,000 samples coming mostly from North Africa, but from all around the world that RV Lonoid use. And you can see that the permeability prediction based on porosity is pretty good. And in fact, you can see that there's a difference if you look at the interparticle mesoporosity with patchy distribution or with uniform distribution. So making that distinction in the petrophysical classes allows Lonoi to be more accurate to maximize his square R, his Pearson coefficient. And you can do this also for interparticle macroporosity. And same thing, we see that distinguishing between patchy and non-patchy or uniform distribution makes a big difference in the square R. And this is the value of these classes. And this is what companies do or what researchers do when they do rock typing. So that brings me to my summary for this class. What have we learned today? First, we know that those petrophysical classes are here to optimize permeability prediction from porosity. Next, we've seen that all of these petrophysical classification are anchored in facious schemes. So that means you need to know your Dunham textures because they are at the basis of those classifications. We've also seen 
that there are multi-scale porosity models. By this, I mean you need to predict the porosity of the matrix and the porosity of the VOG. So that's a big complication, this multi-scale dimension to permeability prediction. And finally, we've seen that these uh, classification tend to be very field specific, like Jerry Lucia's classification was specific for the Permian Basin. And Harvey Illinois tried to do a universal ca uh, classification, but to my knowledge, companies still prefer to use rock typing that are specific for their particular area of interest. So that's it. That's the end of the first part of this course. In the next class, we'll start to talk about the sediment and the facies models for carbonate systems. Wow.